So we're just moving on to cleaning up some of the metal parts here and this is the vibrato unit. So all we're using is some uh, peak uh, metal polish here and we're just using that to take a lot of the heavy stuff off and then we'll probably come back with some uh, jewellers polish and stuff like that to get it as shiny as we can. So we'll just get on there, we've done a test area here earlier, you can see it's cleaned up nicely, uh, we just gave it one quick rub so we'll uh, come back to that as well when we're doing the final polish. So there we go, that's the bulk of our hardware cleaned up and it's all nice and shiny. So we'll probably just come back before we install it, or even when it's installed, and we'll uh, just do another clean up and a bit of a buffing on it uh, for its final finish. So next we're just looking at our tuners here. And I don't know if you can make it out but these tuners are absolutely filthy. So we're going to try something different to try and get them cleaned up. Uh, but one thing we're going to do is you can see this tuning button is a completely different colour to uh, all the others. There's uh, no match at all. So what we're going to do is take that off and we're going to replace it with this which is a lot closer in uh, colour and shape. So we'll take this off now. It looks like it's glued in or super glued in so we might end up smashing it completely to take it off and we'll get our this button on in its place which should be much more of a match and just get things looking a lot more even. So that's our uh, machine head replaced there. Uh, so it blends in a little bit better than the original uh, one we took off, this kind of perloid one uh, here. So uh, next thing what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at this one. And you can see where it's bent quite badly. So we'll be taking this tuner apart. We're going to take them all apart in fact. So we'll just be taking this one apart first though and seeing can we um, get this bent straight again. So just a quick bend in the vise there with the pliers and we've got that... Uh, almost perfectly straight again, so a lot better than it was. So we have all our tuner parts now inside our ultrasonic cleaner and we're just going to get this going and it should take off a lot of the uh, heavy stuff. So that's our parts have come out of the uh, ultrasonic cleaner and they've come up quite well. Uh, a lot of the dirt you can see came off when they just gave them a quick wipe. Um, you can see some parts came out cleaner than others. But we're going to give them all another quick uh, wipe with some polish outside as well. And um, they should be good to go back on and looking in much better condition than they were. So uh, here we are at the moment, we have the body uh, has been fine sanded, well not completely fine sanded, but sanded up to uh, 240 grit. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come back with some grain filler. And this is just some grain filler we've mixed with some uh, white spirit to tin it down. And we're just going to rub that all over the body and that will fill in any little teeny tiny holes or gaps in the grain and stuff like that. And it just means when that dries we can come back and completely fine sand it right up to a nice high grip, probably 320 or 400. And it gives us a very smooth surface to start applying our paint with. So we're just going to liberally apply this now all over the body. So we're just rubbing this in completely to fill in the grain all over the body. So it might be a little bit tough to make out but if you can just see here where the grain filler has gone in and it's a lot darker than the wood around it. that means it's gone in and filled that area so as I said we'll do this over the whole body and then when it's fine sanded that will give us a perfectly smooth finish to start applying our paint. So our grain filler has all dried and we've fine sanded the body right up to 400 grit and we've just taped off the neck now so our next step is going to be we're going to spray primer on the body.
So that's our primer done. Uh, the noise in the background is just a fan we have running to get rid of any leftover fumes. And the neck is still masked off because we'll be keeping that natural. So we're just going to let that primer cure overnight. We'll come back to it tomorrow and just sand out any bumps or anything like that. And just kind of denib the whole thing. And then we'll start on doing our colours. Okay, so as I said, we're done with the primer now. Uh, we're going to move on to the first of our three colours we're going to be doing. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to tell you what the paint job is, but you'll yeah, probably guess it very soon. So I'm just going to throw my mask on and we're just going to do our first section here in uh, this green. So as we've been working away on the instrument, uh, P. Holiday has paid us a visit and he's brought us over some uh, extra parts for the guitar. Um, he's brought us over two correct and uh, matching strap buttons. They'll replace this plastic one and the mismatch one we originally had on, so that's great to have them. And he's also brought us over this plate. Uh, you can just see it there, Watkins High Low Vibrato. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill a couple of holes and we're going to attach this to our original uh, tremolo plate. So that should look pretty cool there. So Peak had these uh, on a spare uh, Watkins rapier that he had. So it's brilliant that we have these extra parts and to make it more period correct and looking extra cool. So we've just drawn up some center lines on the piece there and we've drawn around the uh, plate that's going to go on just to help us get things centered in that. So we're going to use this as a reference so we can mark exactly where we're going to drill through for the holes rather than trying to scratch the chrome surface and accidentally leave any marks or anything like that. So there we go, there's our vibrato tail piece uh, with its new piece added and my reflection in it. Uh, so there you go, Watkins Hilo vibrato and that looks really good in place and should improve the overall look of the guitar. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take our electronics and electronic harness all out of the pickguard so we can clean both the electronics and the pickguard. Uh, the electronics all work uh, from what we know and from our quick test we did. Uh, it just needs a bit of a clean up and the usual clean the pots and all that. And there's lots of just crud and years and years of filth all built up on the pickguard and around some of the parts and the pots and that. So we'll just clean all that up and we'll do our best to do any other little work that needs to be done while we have it apart. So as you can see we've got our bags and our tape and markers and all so we can keep everything labelled as we take it apart because I don't know if you can make out here you can see we've got a lot of different kind of mismatched screws and stuff so we want to make sure everything goes back exactly where we took it from so nothing gets mixed up. So there we have our electronics removed from our pickguard and you can see they're absolutely filthy so we kind of skipped over a lot of the process of taking them apart so we're just going to give them a good good clean and clean down the pickguard and that uh, and we'll probably show you some little bits of that so just to give you a quick comparison uh, here's a pickup we've cleaned and one we haven't so you can see there's a lot of crud and some very suspiciously smelling uh, 60s or 70s types residue on it if you know what I mean and just to look at these pickups as I was saying if you can just make out underneath them there you'll see we actually have five pull pieces so starting from that end be one two three four five rather than six and apparently there's extra windings around these um, last two pull pieces here to boost the treble output a bit as the pickups were quite weak for their time so that's just an interesting little fact about those pickups so before we put our electronics uh, back in, uh, we're going to shield the back of the pickguard. So uh, luckily enough, uh, this pickguard fits perfectly on uh, one sheet here. So we'll just use up the one sheet and we'll still have some spares left over. So just start to peel off the back and then we'll slide the whole thing on. So now we've got our pickguard shielding in place, we can now put the pickguard and all the electronics back in together. So I just take it piece by piece, we're just putting in the selector switch first. 
and we're just putting them in a little bit and not fully tightening anything just to hold everything in place and make sure everything's still working and that we don't have any issues so we just press on ahead with this now so that's our pick guard back together uh, with all our switches and controls all back in place and we've shielded the back of it so it's ready to go back in the instrument now And we've put on our headstock decal. I definitely think we lost the footage of that. Um, and that's all been lacquered as well. The back of the neck has been lacquered. And we've painted over where our fret, uh, positions are. Because we're going to be doing something custom there. So we've just gone over them with a little layer of black. We're going to be putting down some custom uh, inlay stickers. Uh, sorry, we're going to be painting over those in white. Putting down some custom uh, fretboard stickers. Painting it again in black and then taking the stickers off to reveal the custom inlay that uh, Pete wants. So we're going to go ahead with that now and hopefully that's everything up to date. So we're just going to spray uh, just some gloss white onto our fret positions here. And we're doing this on our workbench even though we really shouldn't. It's just that uh, with the lacquer still not being fully cured. I don't want to put any masking tape or anything on it in case it marks it or affects a cure in any way so we just have a bunch of cloths keeping everywhere covered and secure while we do this. So just to bring you back we've stuck down our uh, inlay stickers and we've gone over it in black and um, so you might be able to make out one or two parts of it there. Um, maybe not with the shine of the paint, but that's where we are at the moment. So we're going to let all that dry and we'll come back to it after. So we've shielded the inside cavity now. And we're just going to check for continuity. And that's just ensure that there is a signal passing through all of the copper tape. So that means that when we put the pick card back on, that we get a completely closed, uh, almost like a Faraday cage to ensure we don't get any interference. So we're just... So you can hear it beeping that there is continuity. So we're just checking everywhere. So that's good. So that means we have a proper electrical signal going all the way through. So we'll just keep going now and keep on adding some more parts. So we're just about to begin our final assembly here. And you can see we've got the cavity all shielded. And one thing we did off camera was we've drilled a new hole just here. You can see we've got this wire passing through. And this is going to be for our ground wire. And I think we said it during the initial assessment that we didn't find any holes at all anywhere around here. So it doesn't look like this guitar was ever drilled to have uh, a ground wire on it. So this will be a new addition we're adding. So we've got the bridge here. And we're just going to attach one end to the back of the bridge. And the other end will be attached to a ground and point on the pick guard somewhere. So that, that combined with all the shielding we've done should keep the noise down a lot. As we know those single coil pickups and stuff from these... 50s and 60s guitars are always a bit notorious for noise and that. So we're just going to go ahead, as I said, solder onto one point here and then we'll clip the end of this and solder it onto the other end uh, on our scratch plate and then we'll just press ahead and continue to add our parts. So we've reinstalled our uh, bridge slash vibrato unit here and you can see our ground wire running from it here and you can just make out these bare wires here that travel around. That's the grounding for all the pots here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to snip this wire here and we're going to solder it onto one of those grounding points along there. Then we'll be able to flip the pickguard and install it and the whole thing should be shielded and grounded then to give us a much quieter uh, signal when we're playing. So that's our ground wire installed now. Uh, as you said it's attached to the tailpiece. So we can now flip over the scratch plate and start to install it. <laughs> so uh, the power has gone out. So we're still doing the uh, final assembly. So this is just by torchlight. So as you can see we've got our pick guard on, we've got our tailpiece in place. And we've got our vibrato arm that we had to re-bend back to suit left handed use as it had been bent uh, for right handed use. 
lots of guitar hanging up and we can do nothing because it's pitch dark so we'll bring you back again when we're due to do the rest of the final assembly hopefully when we get our electricity back so there she is completely back together strung up and sounding lovely we'll try and get a sound clip of uh, Pete playing but that's her with her new vibrato uh, piece put in uh, we put the bridge back in and she's looking well.